<laughs> amen, amen, amen. How many are excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen, amen. How many, this is your first time here at Hope City? First time. I know, I know, I know. The ones that are raising their hand, that's my, those are my, that's my sister and my brother over there. True. So I'm so happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Man, welcome to Hope City. My name is Pastor Nima Suai, and I get the honor and the privilege, along with my husband, to be pastors and to serve here at Hope City, Tanzania. Amen. We're excited what God is doing, um, and Hope City is not just here, but it's also in Houston. So God is doing amazing things in Houston. God is doing amazing things in Tanzania, and I believe God is going to do amazing things all over the world. Amen. And you are get to be a part of that. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, you get to be a part of that. Yes. Yeah, so last week, we're going to get right into it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Not your neighbor. Say, are you ready? Are you awake? Okay. All right. So last week, we started on a series called Before the Foundation. Can everybody say Before the Foundation? Yes. And pastor, if you have not gotten a chance to go and watch that, please go on YouTube, watch that. It is a powerful message about what God's purpose in your life is. And we're going to continue with that today. Amen. And so we're going to go with before the foundation part two. So last week we talked about Ephesians 1, 3 through 4. And the Bible says, that's our main scripture. The Bible tells us that we are blessed. Um, we are blessed be, the, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Come on. Don't we get excited about the scripture? God has blessed us. Woo! Amen. We want to walk out of here and be like, yes, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. Right? But it doesn't stop there. It tells us, it said, man, not only has he given us these spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Okay? That we should be holy without blame before him in love. Praise the name of the Lord. So we had this example last week. I want to go back to it. Okay? If you look at this rope, at the end of this rope is eternity. Before even the beginning, there was already an eternity. That's why God is called the Alpha and Omega. Praise the name of the Lord. So before that, there was eternity. And what the scripture tells us, before the foundation of the world, before the foundation, before the foundation, before even God could say, let there be light, God had already chosen you. Praise the name of the Lord. God had already, I had already thought of Sophia and said, I know I have a purpose for Sophia. God already thought of Prisca and said, I know I have a purpose for Prisca. Before even the light came on, he thought of you. Praise the name of the Lord. And then this right here is the life that we live. Praise the name of the Lord. This life that we live here, right here, is what we are going to talk about. What purpose does God have in your life here on earth? There is a purpose in your life here on earth. And whatever you do here in this life will be accounted in eternity. Amen. And again, God exists. He existed then. He exists now. And he will forever be existent. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why he's the Alpha and the Omega. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, if you're with me, open up, your, open up the Bible. I love, I love, just open up the Bible, and we're going to go and look at the scriptures for today. We're going to look at Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. The word of the Lord says, For the kingdom of heaven... Is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to the one he gave five talents. Everybody say five. I want to hear you say five. To another he gave two. Say two. And to another he gave one. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then 
who had received the five talents, went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he had received the two uh, talents, gained two more also. But he who had received the one went and dug in the ground and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled those accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Everybody say, enter into the joy of the Lord. He also, who, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming, I would have received back my own uh, with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talent. Verse 29, it says, for to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whew. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> How many have heard of this talent, parable of talent before? How many have been, yeah, to school? Sunday school, and you've heard this talent before. I want us to go ahead and pray. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for each person that is in this place. I thank you, almighty God, that is not by power, it's not by might, but only by your spirit. And Lord, we're asking, almighty God, that you transform this parable that we have heard so often, that we have listened to it and heard it over and over. Lord, may your word be alive in us, that we may be able to see the very thing that you want us to see in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, you know, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Morris, he loves to teach. He loves to teach, and he's okay with, you know, I, I'm, he's like, I'm good. If I, I, amen or no amen, me, I'm different. I like to get an amen. So if you like something, you better say amen, okay? I like to get feedback, okay? Pastor, he's good. I'll be the one who'll be like, amen, baby, amen, amen. But he is good, you know? So I want you to talk back to me, okay? If something, if the Holy Spirit is speaking, say yes, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so let us go. Now, this example right here that we talked about last week, I want to go ahead and illustrate a little bit something here. When you look at here, when God made us, God says he made us in our own, in his own image, in his own likeness. So we've got to understand what does God mean when he made us in his own image and his own likeness. When he made us in his own image and likeness, it was not the physical body. It was the spirit, the being, the who you are in you, not the body. It was the spirit. And that's why he said, I made you in my likeness. He has breathed his spirit in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The challenges throughout the Bible, everybody couldn't understand. You had Moses, you had Abraham, you had Isaac, you had all these people that couldn't quite understand. What was it about the image of God? And what does that mean in the physical element of how we're supposed to live? Hence, that's why Jesus came. He came because he was the very 
physical element of the image of God. Why? So that when we live this life, we can imitate the very image of God. Our job here is not to just sit in this earth and just coast along. God has given you a purpose and a mission in your life to live a life that is purposeful. Praise the name of the Lord. And when we look at this talent, so many times we look at it and we say, the soon as I read it, everyone thought I'm going to preach about money. Everyone thought I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about tithes and offerings. We're going to talk about, we're going to get some offering after this. No. There is more to this than just money. And I want you to be able to hear what Jesus was trying to say. Again, Jesus has already lived this. And he's saying, he's saying, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. This is talking about Jesus himself telling his disciples and the people around that I am going to travel. I'm going to go away. Why does he say that? Because in the book of John 14, 2 to 3, it tells us that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go, who is I? Jesus, and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That's where I am. There you may be also. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus came, gave us an example of what we should be doing in this life. But then he said, I've given you this. Now I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I do prepare, I'm going to come back on this journey. And I'm going to ask you, what have you done with the things that I have given you? Praise the name of the Lord. Now a journey, back in the days when you look at the scripture, a journey, um, what would happen would be if, um, if the capital city, let's say for instance, the capital city for us is Dodoma right? Dodoma. And a lot of times within a couple years or so, people were transitioning because the capital city was moved to Dodoma, right? So many people who had established life in Dar es Salaam and they had to go and work in Dodoma, what would happen is that they would leave their house, they would leave their possession, they will leave their things and go and work in Dodoma, right? And then once that person works in Dodoma, it doesn't mean that the house is no longer that person who's working in Dodoma. He still has possessions in Dar es Salaam. So what happened is this man went ahead and said, I am going to leave my possession. I'm going to leave these things to an entrusted servant. I'm going to leave what these possessions are, my house, whatever it may be. I'm going to leave this and I'm going to leave it to my trusted servant. The thing is, so many times is us, when we look at servant, we think of, we think of, I don't know, we think negative of what a servant looks like. But we can't think negative of what a servant looks like because we're being, we're get, being given possessions of an owner's um, things. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So we know that God is trying to tell us that in the kingdom of heaven, there's a man who's Jesus, who's going on a long journey, who's going to return. And when he comes back, he has entrusted his wealth. He has entrusted everything to us, his property, and that we may be temporarily managers of what God has given us. Amen. So we were given or they were given the responsibility and the authority to do something with what they were given. Praise the name of the Lord. So these servants are not really called servants. It's what we call stewards. Because they acted on the behalf of the owner. What it is is that God has entrusted us and given us the responsibility and the authority to do something with what God has has given to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You know what the problem is? The problem is, is that we don't know or not sure of what we have been given. That's the challenge. 
Because if we knew what we have been given, it will be different in how we live our lives today. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, point number one. I want you to write this down. If you have your phone, write it down. Point number one is that we all have been called and have been given talent, each according to our ability. We all, turn to your neighbor and say, that's you, have been called and have been given talent, each according to our ability. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, I need a couple people here. I'm going to have Haggai. Come on. Come on up here. I'm going to have Haggai. I'm going to have Nathan. I'll have you back. Gideon, come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Dream team. Come on, clap your hands for the dream team right here. Oh, we give you five talents. Come on. Gideon, you are one. We'll give you two. We'll have Nathan be one. Okay. All right. Here we go. So God has called us. We all have been called. We all have been given talents, each according to our ability. Now, the Bible tells us there's one that gave five, five talents, right? There's another that gave two talents, and there's another that was one. So I did some research, okay, before I came. I studied all kinds of books. I did all kinds of things. I, I went to what everyone goes to. I went to Google. I went to Google, and I asked Google, I said, I want to know the average salary of what a Tanzanian makes, okay? Because I, I want you to picture this. I want you to be able to understand this. Because sometimes we don't understand until money is in place, I think, sometimes. When you hear money, you're like, ooh, okay, I got it now, okay? So we're, we're going to give you an example of what money, what, what this looked like, okay? So... An average in Tanzania, they said an average salary for a person is about 500,000 shilling per month, okay? Some of you are blessed, you make more. Some of you, you know, you make right there. Some of you a little less, hallelujah, but it's all good, all right? But what it is is that 500,000 shilling per month is what an average Tanzanian make. So the Lord tells us in the story that the first person that God gave was five talents. Now imagine, if you get 500,000 shillings per year, is six million, okay? All right? So five talents, he gave to him. So what he gave was equivalent to 600 million shilling. Now, you tell me right now, what would you do with 600 million shillings? <laughs> huh? I mean, your head, huh? Huh? I'm thinking about Hope City, Tanzania Church. Come on, hallelujah. Hey, build our own church. Come on. 600 million shillings, that's a lot of money. And that was at one time, like, boom, here you go, 600 million. It's not, it's not any, I'm giving you, no, 600 million shilling. boom, just like that. I'm entrusting this with you. That's a lot. Now you're starting to think, oh, okay, okay. And then the two talent, okay, 240 million. All right? The one talent, he's got 120 million. Now, as your head is churning, I know we're talking about money. But as far as the talent that God was talking about here is not just here. The talent that God is talking about is in the aspect of even time. Your time. God has given each one of us according to our ability. That's why you have people that live to 105. And you have people that live to 50. You have people that live to 30. You have unfortunate people that just say, how can this kid die at 10? God has given us that time as well. Not only talent. According to our ability. Praise the name of the Lord. Not only time and treasures and money, but he has given us, each one of us has an ability, has a distinguished craftsmanship. Praise the name of the Lord. Sister Ann is here. If you want some delicious cake, that's who to go to. Don't ask me to make you a cake. I don't have that ability or capability. Praise the name of the Lord. Each one of you guys have been given something it's according to what God has purposed in your life. 
So it's not just about it's not just about talent or money. It's not about time. It's not about treasures or it's not about um, uh, yeah time. It's also about energy. But the biggest thing that I want you to get is not only about those things, but also God has given you people that are around you. He has given you those people that are around you. I am a daughter. And I have siblings. We are five of us. Okay? It's a huge family. There's some that only have two brothers or two sisters or only one. So each one has different talents, even with the people that God has surrounded you with. So some have five, some have two, and some have one. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So as we look at that now, (laughs) it's funny this year when we were looking at this. Um, I was, this week, I went to a salon, and uh, when I was there, everybody was talking about um, Zimbabwe, you know. Everyone was saying, man, with this life right now, I'm ready to cut my toe and go to Zimbabwe so I can get some money. Okay, you guys, if anybody's thinking about that, it is fake. It's not real, okay. But it's such a desperation for us how much we want this quick money, right? How much we want, I don't know how many it was, 92 million, I don't know how much. But whatever it was, how we are desperate to be wanting this money. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so let me tell you one of the things. When you have this, the thing that the enemy likes to do, the traps that the enemy likes to set when we have these talents. And I want you to be careful with all the sphere of what we have talked about. The enemy that, um, the traps that the enemy likes to set for the person who has five talents. Do you know what that is? He has five talents. The trap that the enemy likes to set is pride. Why? Because I have five talents. I no longer need the owner. I have 600 million shillings. I no longer remember that this 600 million shilling was given to me by the owner. Now it becomes, it's me. It's mine. So when you look at your life, There's so many aspects of that. Whatever it is that God has given you that's five, you've got to sit there and be like, am I giving that five to God? Or all of a sudden, am I keeping that to myself? Am I saying that because God has blessed me now with so much money, I no longer can say, God, you blessed me with that job. Now it's like, oh, to give you you 10%, really? This is my money. I went to school. I worked hard. I did this. All those things. Now you become the owner. And God is no longer the owner. That's how the enemy creeps in. And you no longer are utilizing what God has given you for the talent that he has given you. And knowing that he's the one that he has given you. Now you're saying, I'm the one. So we look at the two talents. What is it that the enemy creeps and does with the two talents? The thing with the two talents that is dangerous that the enemy likes to play with us as Christians is that we have what we call a comparison issue. This is very dangerous because what happens is, man, well, God, how come I didn't get five talents? Okay? And then you're like, but, hey, hey, at least I'm not like one talent. So now we start to compare ourselves. We start to let the enemy steal the joy of what God has given us. You start to look at 240 and you're like, man, a guy. He, he got 600 million. Huh. And then there's a quick thing that, ah, like any, uh, at least, at least, ah, like any school come on Nathan, 120. Ah, for that. Either way it goes, you're comparing yourself with what God has given you. This talent right here, the issue with this talent is that the 120, he starts to feel like he's the least of all of them. What is, the, what is the thing that the enemy traps us with the 120? Is insecurity. Is insecurity. We feel insignificant of what God has given us. Whatever it is, whether five, two, or one, God has given you something in your life to do something with it. Praise the name of the Lord. God has given each one of you something that is incredible, that is amazing, that he wants you to do something in your life with it. Praise the name of the Lord. 
When we look at Colossians 3, 23 through 24, the word of the Lord says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. When you start to look at each other, you're going to compare. You're going to start, ha, ha, ha. But God is saying, don't do this for men. Do this for God, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Amen. The question is not regarding the ability or how much, but the question is about what you are doing with the ability that God has given you today. Praise the name of the Lord. God has given you each one something that is there, something that identifies you and says, boop, that's Jessica. Boop, that's Edina. What are you doing with what God has given you? Don't worry about, well, it's not that much. Oh, it's too much. Oh, it's too little or this. No. What are you doing with whatever amount that God has given you today? Praise the name of the Lord. All right, point number two. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, give, give a clap offering for our dream team. Thank you, guys, so much. Point number two. If you're writing down, we are managers of his kingdom possession. He owns everything. We are managers of his kingdom possession. He owns everything. We are responsible to faithfully protect and expand the resources God has entrusted to us as managers on his behalf. God has called us to management, not ownership. God has called us to? Not, he has called us to management, not ownership. Um, before I came here, before the previous job that I had, uh, I started out as a resource manager for a hospital. The resource manager, when I first started, because it was my first management job, I felt like it was the hardest job ever. Because not only did I have to manage resource, but I had to manage people. I had to manage just crazy amount of things. And it was quite overwhelming. So any patient that will come into the hospital, I will manage from the time that they come in into the whatever emergency room. If they come in, I have to make sure that we have staff in the emergency room to take care of this patient. We had the equipment that we needed to take care of this patient. If they went to the floor, we wanted to make sure the room that we needed, if they were in any infection, if we need an infection room, I had to make sure that I had the right infection room. I had the staff in that floor to take care of that patient. And everything around that hospital, I had to make sure that I'm managing whatever resources that we have in this hospital. The hardest thing about this job for me when I first started was that be because I had this job, all of a sudden I thought now I didn't manage. All of a sudden I thought that I was the owner. I started to take the responsibility of everything as an owner. Because all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, we don't have any beds. Okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to, oh my. Oh. I was going crazy and overwhelmed because I did not know that we had a CEO a COO, a CNO, all these people, that when I am in desperate need, I can say, look, CNO, here you go. We need some staff. Here you go. We need some wheelchairs. Here you go. We need things. The thing that was so hard for me was because I took the ownership position instead of the management position. The problem with so many Christians is that we have a hard time in this life because we are owning the very thing that we're supposed to manage. And at any time, that thing that we're supposed to manage gets hard. Guess what? You call on the Holy Spirit. You call on him and you say, come on down because I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my home. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my business. You are the one that gave me this. You are the one that opened this store. And Lord, I need you in this place because I'm only managing. I'm not owning it. Praise the name of the Lord. That is a problem with us. It's because so many times we're like, oh, man, I got I to gotta own it. And it becomes hard for us because we're owning it. 
and we're not allowing God to take ownership. Praise the name of the Lord. James 1.17 says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from oh, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Our owner that we have owns the beginning and the end. Pastor last week said the beginning, the galaxy, the billions and trillions of stars of what we have studied. We only know 10 to 15 percent of that. We only know what we know, the knowledge that we know is only 10 to 15 percent of that. The oceans, when you go deep in the oceans, now they've discovered that you can go even deep. There's species that we've never discovered. We only know 15% of that. I'm a nurse. There's healthcare workers in our body, in our being. We're being eaten by cancer. Nobody can solve. How do we solve this cancer? Why? Because we still don't know what fully is going on in our bodies. We only know a few details of what goes on. And who knows that? Your owner. Your owner is a very God that knows all these things. And all he's asked you is, I've entrusted you with this. Manage it. I've entrusted you with this ability. Manage it. I've entrusted you with this resource. Manage it. I've entrusted you with this finance. Manage it. I've entrusted you with brothers and sisters that need to know me. Manage it. Praise the name of the Lord. We are now called owners. We are called managers. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I am called a manager. And I love being a manager. Is there anything in your life today that you look at and you say, it is mine? Is there anything in your life today that when you look at and you say, God, I've been owning this instead of managing this? I don't own anything. God owns it all. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. Point number three. So point number one, you all have talent. Amen. You have ability. It's different. It looks different. There's a different sphere of that talent and how that looks like. And then whatever it is that that is, we've called to manage, not to own. So now, point number three is you can use the calling and the talent that the owner, before the foundation, has given you, or you can lose it. Use it or lose it. Use it or. So we know that the person with the five talents came back with how many? Oh, man, we don't have no math people here today. Five talents, how many did they come back with? All right, we're with, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, two talents came back with? Huh? Twelve. Okay, I thought I heard twelve. Oh. <laughs> All right, one talent came with? Yes, they came back with one. So five came back with ten, two came back with four, and one came back with one. All right, so let's look at use it. There's a blessing in our faithfulness. We have to be faithful and diligent with what God has given to us. If you look at this scripture, when you look at this parable, when the owner came back, he did not ask for that 10. What did the owner say? You have been well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with the few. I will. I will. Okay, come on, church. I will. 
I will bless you with more. But our, our mindset as a Christian is that, man, when we come to him, we feel like we're going to give him all the ten. But that's not what he, that's not what he did. He actually said, wow, he didn't even ask for it back. Yeah, man, 600 million shillings. Let's go back to the money. 600 million shillings. You go and you make 1.2 billion shilling. In your mind, you're expecting, man, this is something that the owner is going to want back. But the owner says, uh-uh. You got 1.2? I'm going to give you more. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Our mindset as Christians is that we have a God who is harsh, who's sitting there and says, where's my 1.2 billion? No, he's not like that. He's not like that. He doesn't need your talent. He doesn't need it. He created the beginning. He created the end. He gave you, before you in the foundation, who you were. He doesn't need your talent talent why is he giving you that talent he's giving you that talent for the sake of who for the sake of who for the sake of you praise the name of the lord he's not giving you that talent because he's a god that says i want that back he's a good god he's an awesome god and he wants to bless you to multiply you but you have to be faithful with what God has given you today. Praise the name of the Lord. This morning, I used my brother Haggai. I'm going to use him again. Brother Haggai, if you don't know him, this guy right here, very humble. He won't tell you. But, I mean, if you YouTube any, you know, Paul Clemens or, you know, all these people, you want to know who's playing that lead guitar? Brother Haggai. Let me tell you about Brother Haggai. Come on, you can yes. Yes. Brother Haggai here came yesterday. I was so impressed. I was so touched. He came yesterday to practice. When he came to practice, we were missing a few people who were supposed to play da 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 all this, all that. Anyways, Brother Haggai, I'm looking and I'm coming in, and he's playing the keyboard. I know Brother Haggai. He plays the electric guitar, and he plays it very well. But now he's like, no, 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 no. I want to be able to use what God has given me and to be able to multiply and multiply. He was sitting there, he's playing the keyboard. I said, brother guy, what else do you play? He plays the keyboard, he plays the bass, he plays the electric guitar. What he did, he was faithful with the talent that God has given him. He was able to use it. He said, no, I'm going to come to practice. But when he came here, he said, no, Lord, I want to be able to be used more and more. And God has blessed him more and more. Praise the name of the Lord. We as Christians are all called like that. There's something, even if it's one talent, there's something that God has given you. Use it. Be faithful with that. And when you're faithful with that, God says, I will multiply. And when you multiply and you present it to God, guess what? He doesn't take it back. He just adds. My God is a God of addition. My God is a God of multiplication. My God is not a God of subtraction. My God is a good God. And he wants everything that's here for you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Before we close, I want to be able to talk about the person that didn't use it. All right, turn to your neighbor and say, yeah, we're going to talk about that person. And then tell them, don't be that person. Don't be that person. As the musicians come on up, we're going to. Matthew 7, 20 through 22. This is one of the scriptures that so often as a Christian, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be like this. The word of the Lord says, therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom 
of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name. But the Lord will say, I never knew you. That's scary. That is scary. That's a scary scripture that I so often think, Lord, I do not want to be the person that sat here and said, oh, come on. No, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then at the end, when I go into heaven, the Lord says, who are you? Pastor who? No. I want to go into heaven and the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Man, I gave you a few here and I will bless you with more. The problem with the one talent guy, I want you guys to understand. The one talent guy said, Lord, what I did, because I knew you were a harsh man, the knowledge of God was off. He saw God as a mean owner, as a harsh God. But we know that our God is good. We know that our God is faithful. But because he had that knowledge of God being harsh, therefore he went and he dug a hole and he buried the talent inside the hole. Now, when we look at this parable so many times, we say, oh, okay, yeah, 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 I understand. You buried the dead. We as Christians, we say, Lord, I didn't double it like two or five, but hey, at least I didn't lose it. We have this mindset that it's neutral. I mean, I'm not doing anything bad. I'm good. I'm okay. And so what it does, it looks like you are working, but you're not producing. I want to challenge us as Christians that we can do so hard in working and digging. But reality is we're not producing anything. Praise the name of the Lord. We could come here and we can say, I went to church on Sunday. I went to f and I did this. I did that. I did this. And you're working. And you're working. And you're working. But you're bearing your talent. God wants to use that very talent for you to make a difference in other people around you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The talent is not being used to be dug, dug, and to be buried. It is supposed to be used to be made a difference in every aspect of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. So look at your neighbor and say, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Praise the name of the Lord. God is so faithful to us. God is so good to us. And he wants to, your life here to have a purpose. Your life here to have an eternal difference. So when we come, he wants to say, well done, my faithful servant. Praise the name of the Lord. As you stand up on your feet this morning, There's some of you today that said, man, um, that was a great message. Thank you. Uh, but maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, man, I don't know this Jesus. And maybe you're watching online and you're saying, man, I want to know this Jesus. There's no way that you can live this life without him. And if you're here today, we want to give you that opportunity. And all we ask as we close our eyes this morning, we ask you if that's you today, that you just raise your hand and you say, that's me. I want to accept Jesus. There's no way that you can know the very thing that God has in store for you, his love for you, if you do not know him. So we ask you right now to go ahead and raise your hand. And if you're online, go ahead and raise your hand. And pray this prayer with me. 
And if you have already been saved before, you can pray along as well to encourage the others. Lift one hand up, one on your heart, and say, Dear Jesus, I come to you. I thank you because you are an amazing God. I thank you, Almighty God, for you are holy. And I thank you, Almighty God, that you said when we come to you, we just have to ask that you enter into our hearts. We give you glory, God, as I ask you to enter into my heart. Be my personal Savior. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if that was your first time, keep your hands lifted, and we're going to make sure that we have. We want to make sure that if this is your first time ever that you've accepted Jesus, we have our ushers in the back. You can always, you can raise your hand, or you can always check one of them and say, hey, I was one of those that raised my hand, because we want to make sure you are purposeful in what God has given you. Now, there's also some people that are here, and I think that's me too. It's not just anybody. When we, when we sit here and we, when we preach, it's not, it's, not, um, it's not so much, okay, you. But this message has also touched me to say, man, I want to do something. With the information of who my God is and the purpose that he has given me, I want to go and make a difference in every aspect of my life. And so as Christians, I want us today to take a step of faith and to say, Lord, I am wanting you to use every talent, every resource. And Lord, my mindset of ownership is no longer, it's gone. But God, I'm asking you to manage. I'm asking you to give me the strength to be able to manage the very thing that you have given me. And so if that is you today, and if you're standing today, all I need you to do is just take a step of faith. And what it is is just you can take a step in front you can take a step on the side you can take a step on the side it doesn't matter just take a step initially to say God I'm receiving this word and I'm believing mighty God in what you are about to do in my life so right now on the count of three one two three take a step and start to praise God and start to ask him to give you the strength father we thank you for this day God we thank you for this moment we thank you father for what you are doing we thank you for the talents that you have given us we thank you almighty God for what you continue to do in every aspect of our lives God may we know almighty God that we are only managers that we don't own anything that you are the great owner of over our lives almighty God God we thank you and we honor you God for what you continue to do in our lives almighty God you reign victorious in every aspect you reign victorious in our lives you reign victorious in every part almighty God we give you glory we give you honor Jehovah for what you continue to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and believe oh hallelujah yes the throne